in the heart of British democracy, the Union Jack has pride of place. But the EU flag isn't given quite the same prominence. The yellow and blue symbol of Europe isn't nearly as popular as the domestic model. The British have always preferred to set themselves apart from the continental mainland. The London Banking District, one of the largest financial centers in the world, long served as a demonstration of British might. But then the global financial crisis hit. Former bankers James and Ian used to be heavy hitters in the financial world. Today, they make bespoke suits out of fine cloth and are only beginning to earn a living from it. There was a, a period about two years ago when you know, a lot of people were coming in to buy their suit and by the time they'd come in to collect the suit, you know, they were being made redundant. So with the huge wave of redundancies, obviously there's a diminished pool of people able to buy suits. James and Ian also lost their jobs during the financial crisis and used their final bonus to open the shop. They say British politicians should heed the lesson they themselves learned to focus on their own interests and to move the center of power away from Brussels and back to London. There's certainly a view in the UK that there's a lot of kind of centralised policy makers in, in Brussels who don't really understand what, it, um, what, what the real world is like. They're sitting in kind of an ivory tower making these decisions and practically they're just not good for business and certainly not good for the UK with the kind of transaction taxes they're looking to implement at the moment. The British have always been critical of the EU, even though Britain has been a member state for decades and reaps enormous benefits from its access to the European market. Millions of British jobs are dependent on the EU. But the fear that Britain will lose its independence carries more weight than rational arguments. You can see here that when ranking international institutions, places like the World Health Organization, the United Nations, NATO, are all more or less favorable to the British public. However, the European Union ranks absolutely last just after the G20 and the IMF and World Bank. A challenge for Europe supporters there's no mistaking the public's EU skepticism. Now, during the Euro crisis, the EU has become an even tougher sell. No one even wants a free shopping bag. They're trying to uh, sort of take over this country in a way, you know what I mean? From a holidaymaker's point of view, we can see how um, nationals of um, other European countries are really str you know, struggling. Even the British government is stoking anti-EU sentiments. Prime Minister David Cameron blames Britain's own economic troubles on the crisis that has gripped a number of European nations. But the pro-Europe side remains undeterred. People seem to misunderstand the reasons why behind the debt crisis. They, they don't realize that the Eurozone as a whole is a very healthy economy. Growth is higher over there, inflation is lower. Uh, they just focus on the fact that a couple of member states of the European Union have trouble with debt and they don't realize the benefits that come from it. You can see, you know, there's, look, this is over 86. But for Mark Seddon and other EU critics, these arguments don't hold water. They want to leave the European Union. If you can believe. They're campaigning to have Britain hold a new vote on EU membership. Clearly there are a lot of people associated with the campaign who have amassed plenty of good economic arguments to say that actually Britain could do quite well outside the European Union. They would cite the examples of uh, Norway or Switzerland. James and Ian say they just want what's best for Britain. At the same time, they're canny businessmen and know that Europe also provides them with many advantages.